It's a great uh, tribute to the RWS 100th anniversary. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm going to be looking at this quite big kit of the F111C. So this is uh, quite a uh, important aircraft for Australian uh, aviation. So it's the 100th uh, anniversary of the RAAF, which is uh, the Royal Australian Air Force. And this particular kit has been available for some time and it appears to have come about uh, to mark the occasion again. So this is the biggest kit available of an F-111, 148 scale. The F-111 is quite a large aircraft, so when you see it, uh, you'll be quite amazed that the box is actually quite compact for the size of it. It's jam-packed in there. Uh, the aircraft itself, um, I think, uh, started uh, service in 1973, and it does come with quite a few different markings uh, the, for anniversaries of that time, so different uh, uh, tail art and such. And the decal is actually made by Cartograph from Italy, so they're very, very nice indeed. So let's have a closer look inside. Right, a very tight box. So when this first came out, I remember from Academy, people were really, really excited because F-111s, they have this particular love-hate look about them. Um, I don't mind it, it's sort of chunky. I think it looks uh, quite interesting. So when I pull it out, you'll just see how chunky it is. Now this is a swing wing aircraft. So it is a, a strategic bomber. And so as such, it needs to be chunky to be able to carry uh, a bit of a payload. So here you've got uh, the top of the fuselage at the rear end, the bottom. Okay, so you've got the two areas here for the uh, jet engines. Nozzles out the back here, of course. Uh, you've got the, uh, the horizontal stabilizers here. And then this is the central main undercarriage bay. So quite chunky. Oh, and the clear parts here. Just see the top part of the, uh, the canopy. So interesting part about this aircraft is it didn't have individual ejector seats. It actually had a whole escape pod that came out um, uh, of the fuselage. Okay, so here you've got a few um, uh, engine intake components. Uh, you got some uh, uh, sensor pods, uh, panels here around the size of the fuselage. Across here you've got some reinforcing uh, beams. Now these would be used for the swing wing. Uh, the swing wing is actually uh, geared, I'll show you in a second, um, so that it can open, um, synchronize left to right. Now you've got some uh, uh, tires there. And then here's a cockpit, so you can see the motor in detail. So you had a side-by-side uh, pilot and co-pilot and this is the back section and front of the uh, instrument panel so this was part of the whole pod from the escape uh, unit that came out here you've got the reinforcing struts for the center uh, undercarriage so really chunky indeed because it is right in the center has to carry a lot of weight and then you've got um, other supporting struts for other parts of the undercarriage as well so it'll be front undercarriage there as well Okay, we'll just move this out of the way. All right, over here, you've got this big, pointy, funny pig-shaped front end. So Hensel is known as a pig. So this section here, you might see the panel lines. Just across this section here is the escape pod that actually flew out and the whole thing came back down to earth uh, with some uh, very large parachutes. You've got the intakes here for the jets. So you just got the fan detail. Uh, you've got various sensors. Uh, you've got, uh, what have we got here? So these would be the horizontal stabilizers. So what was I looking at before? Okay, so that's the vertical. Uh, okay, you got your nozzles here, internal, and then you got some more undercarriage, front wheels, and then the pylons. You got, uh, this is probably more of the, just a front undercarriage wells maybe. Looks about right, fit in there. And just from there you can get a, a better idea of how big this kit's going to be. So if I got these two together, okay, you just push them together there. So you can see the overall length. I mean that's going to be probably close to 40 centimeters by that time that's finished. So 48 scale, that's big indeed. It's really chunky. 
Okay, so they're the big bits. All right, so we've got this section here, which has got some, some armaments, got some missiles, um, various pods, air-to-air -air missiles, uh, various sensors, so laser guiding. They got another nozzle here. Why well, we got another nozzle here? That's got me wondering what that is. So we'll find out in a second, I guess, when we'll look at the manual. At the back here, there's some more finer details. There's actually a different instrument panel there as well. So it must be for a different version. So maybe some chaff dispensers. So a few other bits and pieces for different um, variations of the aircraft, I think. All right, then you come to the wings. So this is where I was talking about how it's been geared. So you see, you've got the teeth here. So these are actually interlock, so that when you pull one side, the other side will move in tandem with the gearing mechanism. And then you have these extra tanks. Uh, and then you've got the rear section here, probably with some... Uh, that'll be the air brake, yep. And that looks like some more reinforcing parts here. Because you imagine, I mean, you've got big wings, so it's going to need a lot of movement. Now the F-111C was actually made specifically for the Australian Air Force and it had longer wings. Okay, so you can get a basic idea that that's going to be rough of the wingspan when it's fully extended. Big. Alright, so here we've got... Um, there's the, uh, the decals, very nicely printed by Cartograph. So there's quite a few different versions here, you've got 25th Anniversary. Uh, you got a 90th anniversary, I'm not really sure what that's for, because that's 1917. So, the Royal Australian Air Force is actually 1920-something. Must be 1921, uh, 22. Okay, so 25th anniversary, there's 30 years as well, 30 years of um, service from the F-111. And then you have all the very fine stenciling. All the insignias, the kangaroo. So a lot of choice here. Some really nice um, uh, silver printing as well. It's got a, a nice metallic sheen to it. So quite a few options. Very big sheet. Alright, then we get into the manual. Alright, so... Alright, so that's a decal sheet. So here we go with the actual construction manual. You've got all your colour chart here. So we've got the codes there for GSI, uh, Mr. Color, Life Color, Humbrel, uh, Testers, and Model Master. All right, and so you start off with each step. So you get the uh, the cockpit built first. You got the front undercarriage bay that's assembled, and then that's all built in here. Actually, there's a little uh, front pilot tube which I forgot to show you. That's actually here. Where is it? There it is. Nice little brass machining there. Adds a little bit of length to the front. Okay, so that's on right there, as the two halves of the front of the fuselage go together. You start, um, hang on, we jumped a bit here. Oh, unfolds, there you go. Let me just make a bit more space here. Move that there. All right, so let's unfold it, okay. So here you've got the bottom of the fuselage and the actual folding wing mechanism going together. So as you can see, you've got this big strut here to give it some strength. Uh, you've got additional parts here. This must be for the extension of uh, the flaps because these appear to be actually hinged and attached. So we'll see where they're attached. Oh, okay, so these are attached to the pylons so that as this is folded out, the pylons actually follow uh, the length of the uh, the fuselage, so you're not on a funny, crazy angle. That's very clever. Okay, then the tops go on to seal that all up. This part here, so you've got those uh, intakes going in, the pod just behind the wings, and then the top section is enclosed over the top. And then you've got the front section attached to the rear section of the fuselage with the canopy going on. Okay, so from there, you've got the rear end going in, so you've got the nozzles. You've got the horizontal stabilizers and the vertical stabilizer. Uh, the undercarriage, all the, uh, uh, the undercarriage doors. 
So that's the open position. Okay, so here we move towards the back. You've got the engine intakes. Uh, they're all applied to the side underneath the fuse. Uh, the undercarriage going in, so you can see those big, look like wishbone type suspension going in. Got various pods getting built and um, uh, stores. So you get the options of building these into the pylons. Uh, what have we got here? All right, so 17. I think that's it. That's the last step. So, pretty simple manual. And then on the back, it's got all the listing of all the different parts. So as you can see, very big components, not a lot of parts, but by the time it all goes together, it's a really impressive kit with some moving parts. I mean, the wings move with the pilots following as well. Okay, so that's the manual. And then finally we have the painting guide. So this will go through all the various options. So you've got some stores here with the colors and where the decals go. So as you can imagine, they'll have a lot of um, stenciling on all of these. This is all stenciling here as well. It's quite involved. You got the insignia. And that's all the common parts. And then on the back, there are your options for the different types of, um, of markings. Okay, so 2009, 2006, 2002. So various squadron markings. And then you have the uh, commemorative ones. So 30 years of F111 service. And then you've got the 25 year one as well. So a slightly different design. And then there's this one, which is a 90th anniversary for 2007. I'm not too sure what this one was for. Perhaps someone would be better enlightened and be able to fill us in with what that one is there. But either way, either of these are all very, very colorful. So for a low vis scheme like this, uh, to go to something with a, a nose art like this, not nose art, I should say tail art, uh, it's, it's quite spectacular. I mean, that's quite nice there. So there it is. That is the Academy Australian F111C in 1 to 48 scale. And it's a great uh, tribute to the RSS 100th anniversary.